Let's talk a little bit about IBS. Uh, I'm Dr. Philip Oob at Oob Medical, and um, I'm a functional medicine doctor, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what IBS means to me as a functional medicine doctor. So IBS, or irritable bowel syndrome, has a wide array and constellation of symptoms, and chances are if you're having any bowel discomfort that can't be explained by any, any sort of infection or anything in con conventional med medicine, that you're going to be diagnosed with IBS. IBS is basically a wastebasket term by the conventional medical doctors basically saying we're not sure what's going on. IBS symptoms can range from just occasional tummy aches to constipation to diarrhea to mucus or blood in your stool and then some people even fluctuate back and forth from constipation to diarrhea. A hallmark of the uh, sim syndrome is abdominal pain and that doesn't need to be excruciating abdominal pain. It doesn't need to be I'm curled up in the corner in the bathroom because I I'm just in so much pain. It can just be a mild pain where you ate a meal and now your stomach hurts and you're not sure why. Digestion's not supposed to hurt, guys. Um, going throughout your day, you're supposed to be able to eat food and not have any issues with that food. And so if you are having issues with that food, it's time to evaluate what exactly is going on in digestion, what's going wrong that it's you're having this issue. And so in the functional medicine world, we really evaluate what's going on in the bowels to understand what needs to be corrected. Instead of calling something IBS, we'll actually evaluate what's what's really the, the crux, the root of the problem. So I'm going to tell you about my top three causes of um, IBS. So number one is uh, dysbiosis. So dysbiosis is a fancy way of saying your bacteria are off. You have trillions of microbes in your bowels. In fact, their DNA actually outnumbers your own DNA. And so without the right microbes, your environment all of a sudden turns from a complex eat anything, handle anything, to a, oh, I can only handle these very simple foods because I don't have the right bacteria down there. So if your trillions of bacteria starts de decreasing then that's one form of dysbiosis. All dysbiosis means is dys is inappropriate or, or wrong or dysfunctional, and then biosis just means bacterium. So it's a fancy way of saying there's something wrong with the bacteria. And so not having enough bacteria is certainly one problem. Another problem that's actually more likely for most people is not enough diversity. So you need a diverse bacterial population to handle any food that comes across. And the way to think about it is the more diverse your diet, the more diverse reverse your bowels. So if you really rewind the clock by the past 24 hours and you write down what colors of foods you ate, and so if you ate a blueberry that's blue, if you ate an apple that's red and it's got a little white on the inside, um, then you can go through your color spectrum. If you finish the day <clears throat> and you've only eaten burgers and french fries and the only colors on your color palette is brown and white, then chances are you've got a pretty simple gut. And that simple gut is going to cause issues because the body's not designed for a simple gut. We were designed to have complex bacteria, complex foods, and we were designed to be able to handle all that. So the, the first thing you can do to start improving your bowel function is by eating a complex diet. Number two cause of uh, IBS or irritable bowel syndrome is going to be inflammation. So inflammatory processes going on inside of the bowels is a significant reason to have abdominal pain. That just makes sense. If your immune system is turned on towards the food you're eating, then it's going to hurt. That's all the immune system does is create inflammation. And inflammation, if you've ever cut your finger, tells you, okay, it hurts, it's red, it's swollen. That's no different from uh, your immune system attacking food inside of your bowels. The top two culprits of food irritants that stimulate the immune system are gluten and dairy. And people often consider dairy as lactose. And so lactose intolerance is a completely is different issue than um, dairy sensitivity. You're sensitive to protein. And so actually it's the protein in dairy products. So technically butter or ghee is actually fine to eat on a dairy-free diet. But the top two triggers are gluten and dairy. So if you're having issues, those are the first two things to remove. The third cause of IBS is actually insufficiency. So the digestive tract has to create several enzymes and chemicals in order to digest your food fully. And so in the stomach, it has to create stomach acid. And then when the stomach acid is appropriately digested the food, the, the food then moves into the small intestine. When it gets to the small intestine, then it has to make bile. 
um, and the bile is released by the gallbladder. Now, if you don't have a gallbladder, your bile is still made by the liver, and that's a, a whole other story in itself. So people that have had gallbladders removed can suffer from biliary insufficiency. So we've talked about stomach acid deficiency, we've talked about biliary insufficiency, but another key factor is actually pancreatic insufficiency. So the pancreas makes enzymes. Many people think of the pancreas as the, the diabetes organ since it makes the insulin, but um, the main key feature of the pancreas is to make digestive enzymes enzymes and help you break down your food. If you want to digest and absorb your food in a timely manner, because food doesn't stay in the intestines forever, it keeps moving. So you either absorb it or it moves along. So you need these enzymes to break down the, the pieces of food into small microscopic uh, molecules, and then your bowels can finally absorb them. So without these enzymes, you're definitely going to have pain, uh, you're going to have poor absorption, and if food isn't absorbed properly, then it's going to feed the wrong bacteria, and the wrong bacteria are going to grow, and then that's back to problem number one, dysbiosis. So what I want to tell you is that IBS has numerous causes, and you need to be evaluating those actual causes. One of the first things I recommend for anyone with bowel trouble is actually a stool study, because the only way to really see what's going on inside of the bowels is to analyze a, a full comprehensive stool study study. Now, many doctors can order a stool study and basically they're just looking for parasites. But nowadays we can test, do you have enough pancreatic enzymes? Do you have enough stomach acid? What's your bacterial balance looking like? How many of each do you have? What's the diversity looking like? Is there inflammation going on? Is there, there signs of food irritation? So if you're struggling with IBS and not getting the answers from your conventional medical doctor, then seek out a functional medicine doctor. Look further. There's solutions out there for you. Stop hurting. Stop suffering. Stop running to the bathroom with, with urgency to, to, to have a bowel movement. There are answers out there. You have to keep looking. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Please uh, share it, like it, um, tag a friend that may be suffering from IBS, or uh, private message them so maybe you don't uh, announce it to the world. So I hope you guys have a good day. It's certainly looking like a, a wonderful day here in Austin. It's in the 60s uh, in December. Gotta love Austin.